there are two hard things in computer science, cache invalidation and naming things. In today's video, we're going to be solving cache invalidation. We're looking at the get products query, which fetches a list of products from the database. You can see we're using a cache service for the cache key of product. And if there's a cache miss, we go to the database and we fetch a list of products. Let me show you what are some of the potential issues that could happen when we use caching. I'm going to start our API and we're going to head over to Postman. I'm going to send a post request to create a product. Let's say this is a YouTube video. Now when this request completes, we have one product in the database. Let's create one more and one more. So we have three products in the database. If I go to the endpoint for fetching the product and I send the request to our API, you'll see that we get the free product that we just created back from our API. So everything is great. Now remember that this is cached. So if I send it again, we're going to get back the cached value. Now, why is this a problem? Let me show you what happens when I try to delete the product with the ID of one. So I send this request it completes and the product is deleted from the database. And if I go to the get products query and I send it, we're going to get back the product that we just deleted because we are returning a cached value. Also, if I were to create one more product, let's say the fourth product, and I send the request, the product is created and saved in the database. And I try to get the list of products again, you'll see that there is no product number four. So again, we are returning a cached value and it's not consistent with the current state of our application. Let's see how we can fix this. The problem is we need to invalidate the cache for this cache key whenever there's a change in the underlying table in the database, which is the source of truth. I'm going to show you two solutions for cache invalidation and then you can choose which one you want to use. So let's head over to the create product command handler and here we are persisting the product in the database. We are publishing some event to the event pass, and then we should probably also invalidate the cache. So I'm going to inject the cache service into this handler. So I cache service and we inject it from the constructor. So now I can simply say, ideally right here, after saving the product in the database and before publishing to the bus, I can say cache service, remove, and we can remove it by the products key. Now this is also asynchronous. So I'm going to await this call and this should invalidate the cache when a product is created. So let's repeat the same process when a product is deleted and also when a product is updated. So I'm going to go to the delete products command handler and I'm also going to inject the iCache service here Let's inject it from the constructor. And after persisting the change in the database, let's invalidate the cache. And the same applies in the update product command handler. So I'm going to say private read only I cache service, inject it from the constructor. And here, after persisting the change to the database, let's invalidate the cache. The approach we are using here is manually invalidating the cache whenever there's a change in the underlying source of truth. You can see this is a little cumbersome because we have to find every place in our code where the underlying source of truth changes and then manually add the code for invalidating the cache. This becomes even more complicated if you have more than one cache key. For example, we could also be caching the product by the ID. So here we would have to do something like this delete the products and also delete the product with the given ID. So something like this, where we construct a cache key for the product with the given ID. For all we know, we could be caching dozens of cache keys for a given identifier, and this is going to be difficult to maintain. Nevertheless, let's see if what we just implemented actually works. So I'm going to start our API again, and let's head over to Postman. Let's send a request for fetching the product and see what we get back from the database. This time the product with the ID of one is not there and we have products two, three and four. So let's get rid of, let's say product two and product three. So we would only end up with product number four. And this time, if I send the request, 
you'll see that the cache is invalidated and we get back only the product with the ID of four. If I send the request again, now we get it back from the cache. And now let's try to create another product. This is going to be number five. So let's send this. The cache is invalidated. And if I hit the get endpoint again, we go to the database and we get both of the products. We successfully implemented cache invalidation, but it's not really an ideal solution. Is there a better way to implement this? I'm going to discuss one potential solution. Notice that here, since we are using Mediator, we have access to Mediator's behavior pipelines. We could create a behavior pipeline, which is essentially just a middleware implementation, and add the cache invalidation logic there. We would have to look at the command and somehow figure out from the command how to invalidate the cache. A better approach, in my opinion, would be to use messaging. So let's leverage Mediator's notifications and implement cache invalidation using that. I already have a product created event. I'm just going to have it implement the iNotification interface from Mediator. So let's add the respective events when a product is deleted and when a product is updated. I'm going to copy this over and just apply a few renames. So this is the product deleted event. We need to update the name of the file and I'm just going to change the next space. Now let's say when the product is deleted, I only want to set the product ID. And when a product is updated, we're going to use the full event because we may want to have the entire solution. So this is going to be product updated. I'm going to rename the file and switch the next space. Okay, so now we also need to publish these events. So back in our create product command handler, I'm going to get rid of the cache service because we're no longer going to use it. And let's get rid of it here and let's get rid of it in the constructor. And instead, I'm going to use mediators I publisher. So let's go ahead and inject that. So I publisher coming from mediator, inject it from the constructor. We're already publishing the event to the bus. So let's go ahead and save this event into a local variable. So product created event. And we're also going to publish it using mediator. So publisher publish, we send the product create event, and we can also pass it the cancellation token. Notice that this is going to be an in-memory publish, and this one is going to go over RabbitMQ. If you have a distributed system, you'll have to rely on messages sent over the queue to properly invalidate the cache for all instances of your service. Because we want to do something simpler, I'm going to use the in-memory approach. In the delete product command handler, Let's change the type of the service from iCache service to iPublisher and let's rename it to Publisher. We also need to update the type in the constructor. And here we want to publish the product deleted event. So let's go ahead and instantiate the product deleted event. And we're going to set the ID to the one from our product. So this is going to be request ID. And in the update product command handler, we're going to do the same, replace the iCache service with iPublisher, rename this to Publisher, and we're going to update the type in the constructor. And down below, we also need to publish the product updated event. So let's go ahead and instantiate it. So product updated event. It has a few more properties, so I'm going to initialize them one by one. So let me just fix the indentation here. We want to set the ID of the product and also the name coming from the product and the price. So price is going to be product price. Now that we are publishing the events using Mediator, let's see how we can handle this. I'm going to add a handler in the root folder of the products and let's call it cache invalidation product handler. I said the two hard things in computer science are cache invalidation and naming things. If you have a better name for this class, please suggest it in the comments. Here we want to handle all of the events that we just published. So I'm going to say I notification handler of the product created event. And we're also going to handle the product deleted and product updated. So I notification handler of let's say product updated and I notification handler of product deleted. So we're handling all of the free events right here. 
here we actually want to inject the iCache service. So let's go ahead and do that. iCache service, inject it, and let's use it in the handlers of this method. What I'm going to do is add a handle internal method that I'm going to call from the free handle methods that we already have. So private async task handle internal, and you could accept the product ID. Let's say we should do that. So product ID and the cancellation token. And what we want to do is we want to await cache service remove async. So the only key that we have is products and we can also pass it the cancellation token. Now all I have to do is call the handle internal method from the individual handle methods. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to actually be returning the task and not awaiting it. And we're going to pass it the product ID. This is complaining because I made the argument an integer and not a long. So let me fix that. And we can just copy over the handle internal call in the other handlers that we have. So now this is going to handle the individual product created, updated or deleted events and trigger the cache invalidation. So let's see if this is actually working as intended. I'm going to send the get request from our API one more time and we get back the products from the database and we cache them. So we have two products. Let's go ahead and create a few more. So I'm going to add product six and product seven. And if I go to my get endpoint and send it, you'll see that the cache was properly invalidated and that we get back all of the products that we have in the database. I added a breakpoint in our cache invalidation handler. And let's say we delete the product with the ID of four. So if I send this request to our API, we hit the handle method for the product deleted event. If I press continue, we're going to land in the handle internal method and you can see the product ID is four. So we go over into the cache service and we remove the cache key of products and we effectively invalidate the cache. So this completes, we get back our API response. And if I go to the get endpoint and send it, you'll see that the product with the ID of four is no longer there. Our cache was properly invalidated and we are getting the proper response from the API. Cache invalidation is hard, but it doesn't have to be difficult if you make a good plan. Let me know which solution you would use in your own projects and also make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to my channel. Also take a look at the video that you can see on the screen and until next time, stay awesome.